will be talking about the differences between DNA and RNA. But first, let's consider what each of the two acronyms stand for. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA. RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. RNA. They sound somewhat similar, don't they? This is because they have some similarities between them. Let's talk about these similarities before we talk about the differences. This will help you to better understand the differences between DNA and RNA. The first similarity is that both DNA and RNA are biomolecules. This means that they are produced by cells and are essential to one or more processes that take place inside the body. The second similarity is that DNA and RNA are both genetic materials. This means that both of them can carry genetic information from one generation to another. For example, humans carry their genetic information in DNA while viruses carry their genetic information in RNA. The third similarity is that DNA and RNA are both involved in protein production. I will make a separate in-depth video on protein production, if you want. I can explain the roles played by DNA and RNA separately. So if you want this video, let me know in the comments section below. The fourth similarity is that DNA and RNA are both nucleic acids. Do you remember what the acronyms stood for? Deoxynucleic acids and ribonucleic acids. They are called nucleic acids because they are made of nucleotides. This leads to our fifth similarity between these two molecules. Both DNA and RNA are made of monomers called nucleotides. A monomer is a molecule that can be linked through bonds to other identical molecules. This results in the formations of a polymer. A polymer is a scientific word used to describe a long chain made with the same molecule. So, in DNA, our monomer, the single unit, would be a deoxyribonucleotide and our polymer, the chain, would be a deoxyribonucleic acid. The same applies to RNA where our monomer would be a ribonucleotide, while our polymer would be a ribonucleic acid. Let's try to understand. This is what a nucleotide looks like. Each nucleotide has three components. They are a pentose sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. A pentose sugar is a monosaccharide, that is, a single sugar molecule, with five carbon atoms. The phosphate group is a molecule that contains one phosphorus atom that is linked through bonds to four oxygen residues. And finally, a nitrogenous base is a molecule with a nitrogen atom that has the chemical properties of a base. These nitrogenous bases are very interesting molecules and play a big role in the structure and function of DNA and RNA. For instance, they create the genetic code. Both DNA and RNA have all three components. Lastly, the sixth similarity between DNA and RNA relates to the nitrogenous bases. There are five types of nitrogenous bases. They are adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine, and uracil. Of the five nitrogenous bases, DNA and RNA have three in common. They are adenine, guanine, and cytosine. This is the final similarity between DNA and RNA. But what about the other two bases? Well, this leads us to the differences between DNA and RNA. Since we were just talking about nitrogenous bases, let's talk about how they make RNA and DNA different. By now we know that DNA and RNA have three bases in common. However, Thymine and uracil weren't included in that list. This is because thymine is only found in DNA, while uracil is only found in RNA. But, 
What's interesting to note is that they pretty much play the same role. They do the same thing. One is only active in DNA molecules, while the other in RNA molecules. You can think of it like this. Thymine is the equivalent of uracil in DNA, and uracil is the equivalent of thymine in RNA. The second difference between DNA and RNA relates to their pentose sugars. You may recall that both DNA and RNA have pentose sugars. However, they have a different structure. This is evident from their names. The pentose sugar in DNA is called deoxyribose, while the pentose sugar in RNA is called ribose. Both of these sugars have five carbon atoms. But the difference is that ribose has a hydroxyl group, that is an OH group, on the two prime carbon, while deoxyribose does not. This is why the latter is called deoxy, no oxygen. The third difference between DNA and RNA relates to their structures. DNA is a double-stranded helix, while RNA is a single-stranded molecule that can take many shapes. Why is that? Well, it's because they have different functions inside the cell. DNA is meant to store genetic information and pass it down to the next generation. As mentioned prior, this information is stored in the form of uniquely arranged nitrogenous bases and gives instructions on how to make certain proteins. These proteins end up determining our traits. Therefore, DNA needs to be stable and long-lasting, and the double helical arrangement allows for this. The double helix of the DNA molecule is designed so that the part which stores the information, that is the nitrogenous bases, face inwards, while the phosphate groups on each nucleotide face outwards. The double helix is made of two complementary DNA molecules run anti-parallel to each other. This means that the molecules are arranged parallelly, but run in opposite directions, as you can see here. The two DNA molecules are held together by bonds, more specifically hydrogen bonds, formed between the nitrogenous bases. Adenine only forms bonds with thymine, while guanine only forms bonds with cytosine. This is only in DNA of course, because thymine is only found in DNA. But why is RNA single-stranded? It is because RNA is generally not intended to last long. This is especially true for mRNA, a type of RNA. I will discuss other types shortly. But going back to what we were talking about, mRNA is just a template that is copied from the DNA through a process called transcription. It is then taken to the cytoplasm, where it is translated to create proteins. After enough proteins are made, the mRNA disintegrates and is digested. This digestion is important to control the production of proteins. The disintegrated molecules are rearranged reused and repurposed. The fourth difference between DNA and RNA relates to their types. There is only one type of DNA, but there are several types of RNA. The main three are mRNA, as we discussed before, tRNA, and rRNA. These also have different structures. So, the single-stranded RNA we spoke about before only explains mRNA. mRNA is the short form for messenger RNA. It is created during transcription. Its main function is to act as an intermediary molecule between the genetic information found in DNA and the amino acids found in the proteins. Basically, mRNA transports the genetic message, or instructions, from the nucleus into the cytoplasm, so it can be read by our RNAs to make proteins. As mentioned before, I would be glad to make a video on this if you want me to. Just let me know in the comments below. Our RNA is the short form for ribosomal RNA. As the name suggests, it is a part of ribosomes. When the ribosome gets attached to the mRNA, 
The rRNA reads the message encoded in the mRNA to create the correct protein chain, made of the correct amino acids. Amino acids are the molecules that make up the protein chain. They are the monomers of protein molecules. These amino acids are brought to the ribosome by tRNAs. This process is called translation. tRNA is the short form for transfer RNA. These are the molecules that bring different amino acids to the mRNA being read by the rRNA. tRNAs decode the message that is on the mRNA. So, they carry three RNA nucleotides on one end. This is called an anticodon. And on the other end of the tRNA is the corresponding amino acid. If the anticodon is complementary to the three nucleotides on the mRNA, which is called a codon, then the ribosome links the amino acid that is carried by that tRNA to the protein chain that is being made. If it does not match, that tRNA goes away and another joins. This repeats until a match is made or a stop codon is reached. I know that the processes of protein production can be confusing. But it's quite simple. Like I mentioned below, let me know so I can help you out with it through another video. The fifth difference between DNA and RNA relates to replication. DNA can self-replicate while RNA cannot. That means that DNA can make copies of itself. This takes place during two processes. One is mitosis, which results in cell division, and the other is meiosis, which makes gametes that are important for sexual reproduction. I have a video on mitosis and meiosis that is already up on my channel. If you want to learn more about these processes, check it out. I will include the link to that video down below in the description box. And that ends the differences between DNA and RNA. So today we covered the similarities and differences between DNA and RNA. I really hope this was helpful to you. If this video was helpful, give it a like and leave a comment so I can keep making similar videos. Also, don't hesitate to let me know what I can do to help you learn these science concepts better. If this video added value to you, share it with your friends so they can better understand these concepts as well. If you have questions regarding this topic, feel free to ask me via the comments section below. Thank you for watching.